please welcome <laughs> Chef Fabio Viviani. Hey guys, how are you? A lot of seats available today, so you can lay down if you don't feel to sit. It's good, last demo of the day, la best for last, right? Um, all right, so um, appreciate you guys stopping by. So what we're gonna do today is um, we'll showcase couple, uh, three Italian staple. We're gonna showcase how to make basic tomato sauce, five minutes, not more, a uh, couple of meatball and fresh pasta. Now, how many of you likes fresh pasta, to be honest? Probably everybody, if you haven't raised your hand, you either it's got a dislocated shoulder or you're insane. Because why wouldn't you like pasta, right? And how easy, that's perfect, thanks. And, and it's very easy to make, especially if you have a nice food processor. KitchenAid, great, great company. We work with them a lot. Um, always nice, they sponsor, they sponsor the cooking theater and they sponsor the few of the things I have at home, actually. Wife's very happy. Now, making basic tomato sauce. If you're Italian, it's very easy. Basic tomato sauce require three ingredients. And anything that tell you otherwise is lying because they probably haven't been in Italy as much as I have. So basic tomato sauce got four, three ingredients really, plus salt and pepper. It has garlic, I just lost half of it. So garlic smashed, not chopped, not minced, not shaved, don't do the things that they do in movie with the razor blade, that's just plain stupid. That does not work, it's just for the movie, they don't do that in real life. So you got crushed garlic, you got a good amount of olive oil. Now when I say a good amount, I mean like a very, up, up, like overly amount of olive oil, you need a lot of it, because tomato and garlic cooks better in a lot of olive oil. Now, the garlic needs to brown now, just very little brown, not burnt brown, caramel brown. And then I'm gonna get salt and pepper, and I'm gonna season that right now. Pinch of salt, crushed pepper. Now, we're gonna have some basil here, which we'll add at the end. Basil is not an ingredient until the very end. If you put basil right now, if you put basil right now, it's gonna get black. Because you oxidize. Heat does not do well with basil. That's why you don't cook pesto. When you do the pesto, the sauce with pine nuts and cheese, you don't cook it, all right? So, now, here's what we got. We got some 80-20 beef. 80-20 is the percentage between lean meat and fat. 70-30, really fatty, great for burgers. 90-10, 95-5, it's good for people that are either not seeking for flavor or they like their burgers really dry. I don't know why anybody will get lean meat. Um, I don't think it's smart cooking wise, but 80, 20, 75, 25 is perfect for meatball. Then what we're gonna add to our meatball mix to keep them nice and moist, three main ingredients. We're gonna add Parmesan cheese to it. We're gonna add some raw onion, which they will cook in the sauce and we're gonna add ricotta cheese. Now, most people buy bread and soak bread in water or milk for the meatball. The problem is that doing so, you're enabled the milk to boil away as the meatball are cooking, especially if you bake them in the oven. What we're gonna do here is actually something really different. We're gonna get the meatball. Now, my garlic is getting brown, which is a nice light. You're seeing these? You have TVs too? Oh, you got the mirror. Yeah, I couldn't see the mirror. Um, so nice and brown, and then we're gonna add the tomato sauce. Tomato sauce right here. It's gotta be hot. Say it again. This is canned tomato. Now, mind you, I have nothing against using fresh tomato from a plant from your own backyard to do tomato sauce. But I like consistency. And consistency only come with a good quality canned tomato. Now, fresh tomato, you are not in control how they're gonna come out. How sweet, how tart, how big, how small. You can't control it. Tomato can is consistent. So things like tomato sauce, for me it's easier if it's done with tomato can, 
All right? Now, nothing wrong with fresh tomato. I love it. I'll do quick tomato sauce with fresh tomato all day. But basic sauce, especially to cook with meatball, require tomato can to perform a best. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper in the meatball, and a little bit of minced garlic. Now, here's what we got. Yeah, no, I don't have gloves. I don't care about gloves. Gloves is weird. You know, if you're seeing some, you know, I understand restaurant. Some restaurant, they do need to cook with gloves. I get it. Sanitation, I get the whole thing. But, you know, I don't do it. Grandma didn't do it. I don't do it. If your grandmother was wearing gloves, some bad's about to happen. Because it's either she got to clean somewhere, everything. You know, how many times you've seen your grandma wearing gloves to make me bowl? Please, never. It's just weird. Grandma wear gloves, run. Nothing good comes out of it. Nothing. So now here's what we got. We got that. Here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get um, a little bit of olive oil on my hand. I got a little bit of olive oil on my hand. Like that. Now this will help the meatball mix not to stick too much. Now, now that we got the meatball there, what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to shape them. Meatball is nothing else. Than, now, some people cook the onion and the garlic for their meatball. <clears throat> the feeling is that if you cook it, you add an extra level of flavor and, and whatever. But I don't do that. I think that the ease of just mixing and putting from here to the tomato, it cuts the time in half. Because now instead of have to cook five, six, seven, eight ingredients and then wait for them to cool and then mix them, you just get them mixed together and let the flavor develop in the sauce. And there is no searing either. We just get the meatball and we make meatball in the sauce. Now, the shape and the weight, it's important. These are about one ounce meatball, ounce and a half. They will cook in 10, 15 minutes at the most, all right? If you make them bigger, I suggest you to cover them with tomato sauce and put them in the oven and let them sit there for a while. Make sense? So now, I'm only making a few of them to showcase the pasta that we're going to make after. So now, the reason why I'm oiling my hand is because it's easier to shape me. No. Thank God I didn't do it. I was going to walk around in Chef White, but I can't do it if I have tomato sauce all over it. Wife won't let me. Now, you got the meatball there. Now, yeah, that's, that's plenty for, for the demo right now. So now that we got the meatball there, we're going to create pasta recipe. How many of you enjoy make pasta from scratch? You do. You do. How do you do that? Mind if I ask? How do you guys do it? Say it again? Boy, eggs and flour, yes, but how do you do it? You put it on the counter. So you, what you do, what most people do, right? You put them on the counter, wells, you do the wells with the flour, you crack the eggs in the middle, and you do the whole thing, right? Now, that's a great way to go about it. Um, could be a little, could be a little time consuming, right? Could be a little messy sometime. So here's what we're going to do. It's very easy. We're going to open a food processor with a blade attachment. You have an actual blade attachment, the steel blade for this? Do you mind if I get it? Blade attachment. Now, this is a dough attachment, but I like the blade. It's even faster. If we have it. If you don't have it, then I'll leave without it. But they do have it. No, that's not it. Wrong size one. That's all right. So now, here's what we got. I got the meatball cooking in the tomato sauce there. And we're going to leave them alone for a little bit. Beautiful. Now, I got a food processor with a blade attachment. With these attachments, your fresh pasta dough 
is not gonna take longer than 90 seconds. 90 seconds, you go from the counter with the mess to here in 90 seconds, all right? So here's what we're gonna do. Very simple math. Every person you have for dinner, one egg. So let's do this together. If you have two people for dinner, two eggs. If you have four people for dinner, four. Now what happens if you have more than four, if you have six or 10 people? You have to do different batches. Or you pick your favorite, meaning, <laughs> You could also be the person that doesn't want to feed everybody, which is totally fine. You have more than one children, pick your favorite. You have more than one sister, pick your favorite. Now, it might be mean to say, I get it, but I know I'm, I'm a dad, and I only have one kid, so he's my favorite, but it's the only child. But I know for a fact that I was not my mom's favorite kid. Because you know, you love them all equally, but you don't like them all equally. Somebody gets more credit from mom and dad than others. I was not that one. And I'm an only child. For me, it really sucked. Um, now, four eggs is very easy, right? So four eggs. Now, check this out. Four eggs. This is how, f this is how fast make fresh pasta is. How long do you think it takes to crack four eggs in the bowl? 20 seconds. Now, you add some oil, a little bit of oil, right? You add a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. Pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. Now we're going to blend these for literally a second. Done. Off. And now we're going to create the dough by measuring an Italian tablespoon. Let me, let me explain what that is. Italian tablespoon is a measurement unit that require no measuring, no headaches, no problem. It's like easy, all right? So what's happening there is very simple. You get your soup spoon and you pick whatever amount of flour comes up. Couldn't be easier. All right, so now per egg, <clears throat> per egg, we're gonna add the three Italian tablespoons, per egg. And then somebody's gonna be like, how do you know it's gonna be right? You don't. Could be, you need maybe more, maybe less, but unless you touch it and feel it, you can't tell. But these will cut your time by 40 minutes. All right, so 12, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Got it? Easy, right? Now, everybody can do this. Now, what's going to happen? Now, this is going to mix for 20 seconds, all right? If I feel that the dough is too sandy, or too wet, that's the point where I decided what to do next. Shall we add a little water? Shall we uh, add a little flour? Because if the dough is sticky, you can't play with it, right? If the dough is too dry, you can't play with it either. So now, let's look at this. This looks very, very sandy. It's very sandy, all right? So what are we gonna do here? We're going to add a little water, and I'm going to start with two tablespoons of water. One and two. Well, I'll do three. I've done it before. I know that. All right. Now, let's close this, and let's run it for another few seconds. All right, let's see. Perfect dough. Very fast, really quick. Look at this.
Now, my Italian tablespoon of flour, they were maybe a little bigger than the one you scoop out, and it's okay. Because now, I have a perfect, perfect pasta dough. Takes 90 seconds. Okay, fine, two minutes. All right? So now, here's what we're gonna do. Check this out. KitchenAid, come to the rescue. Commercial break. Now, <clears throat> we got pasta done, super fast. And here's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna set these to the wider settings. And that's it. All right, now, with a good machine and my recipe, and the things I want you guys to understand is this, it's not rocket science, meaning I put three tablespoons of water, you might put two. Just play with the dough. Once the dough, it's nice and, and looks shiny and you can play with it, that's all you need. You don't have to put three because I told you three. Who cares what I say? Just try, start with four eggs, a little bit of olive oil, a tablespoon of flour, three tablespoons of flour per, and you go from there. So now I'm gonna stretch this few times until this looks nice. Now I'm gonna go thinner. I'm gonna go a little thinner. And then one more time. Now I got perfect fettuccine. Takes two minutes, guys, all right? So now check this out, check what I'm doing here. Flour, a good amount of flour, fold these. Flour, fold, flour, fold, fold. Flour, flour, fold, 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 and fold. All right, you got that. Now, now I got beautiful pappardelle. Look at that. Beautiful. There. Now we get these in the water. We get that in the water. So now we got the dough done. You got the dough done in literally two minutes. You stretch the pasta in five minutes. Not even. Okay, you got to stretch a little bit more. Big deal. It takes five minutes, guys, five minutes. Now, the first time, it might take you a little longer. Would you mind to wet this for me? Uh, the first time, it might take you a little longer, but then it's, it's smooth sailing. Now, in the same time that you cook your sauce and your meatball, look how beautiful and rich and oily the sauce is. And oily, for me, it's a compliment. Look at that. Perfectly delicious. Thank you. So now, here's what we got. Do I have plating plates? You got any plating plates? Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, got that out of the way. The pasta will boil in no time. Nice, thick cut fettuccine. These are more like pappardelle. 
you know, anything above a half inch in width, it's a pappardelle. Anything below, it's considered between a tagliarini and a fettuccine. And anything thin like spaghetti but flat is a fettuccine. Is a tagliarini. Thank you. That's perfect. And can I have another one just to take the meatball out? Thank you. All right, so let's check this out and let's see if I can make it through a tomato sauce demo without messing up my chef coat. Now, you could spend three more minutes in uh, creating the perfectly shaped meatball. I don't care. I grew up in a family where shape of food, especially meatball, didn't really matter. Some of them were a little irregular. Some of them were crushing up a little bit or breaking. It doesn't matter. Everything goes in flavor. And the good thing is that when you have tomato sauce that you cooked meatball in it, there is bits and pieces of meat inside anyway, and it's more flavor. All right? So now I'm going to have this cooking for literally three more minutes, and then I'm going to cook that in tomato sauce. Any questions so far? No questions? I like that. It's going to be a quick one today. Usually there's a lot of questions. But I'm glad you guys understood. Usually there's a lot of questions, right? But usually there's 500 people too. So Today I was clear. Did you I like put, that. Uh, so did you put some breadcrumbs in the meatballs? I'm sorry, sir. Can, can I ask you to repeat that? I haven't. Did, did you put any breadcrumbs in the meatballs? So breadcrumbs to me is not essential. Meaning in this one, yes. But the answer is play by ear. Meaning, <clears throat> right, so sometime based on how dry or wet your ricotta cheese is, based on the amount of bread and milk that you put, you feel that as you mix the meatball, the filling could be a little more wet than you wish for. So at that point, to make the meatball, pre preventing the meatball from completely falling apart, then you add some breadcrumb as a collagen. But breadcrumb is like eggs into gnocchi or into some other recipe. It's more like there to feed a purpose, not there as a flavor ingredient or fillers. It's more like, let me check the meat. Is it hard enough that I can shape it? Or it's too wet and it's pasty and I'm having a hard time with it? Breadcrumb will soak some of the extra moisture away if you have it. That's kind of what breadcrumb is does for me. Now, other people, which, hey, you do you, as I always say, you do you, but um, other people swear that without breadcrumb is not a meatball. I could argue that it's called meatball for a reason, otherwise it would be a bread bowl, but, you know. So now, all right. Whew. Oh, get inside, get back in. All right. This is literally six tagliatelle string, but it's only like seven foot each. So there's only seven pieces of pasta here, but they're this long. All right, so now, in no time, impressive. No, it's impressive, it's really impressive. Because usually by now they have like a constellation here or something. So now I'm gonna let this cook with high fire and the lid on it, because I do not wish to mess my chef whites. Oh, I almost forgot. A good amount of olive oil. Good. That's it. Now we get this out. I am going to completely add this here. Now, I like the sauce to be nice and juicy. The oil, I don't take it away. Good family style. You have a cheese grater? Right in front of me. Basil. basil. And the cheese grater is there. So now we got some basil here. 
Now, I, like my mom used to do, I leave all the juices, you know, in the plate. And if somebody says, oh, my God, that's too much sauce, my answer is, yeah, you're right. It is. That's what cheese and bread is for. The cheese will soak up to it. And then whatever it doesn't soak up, you got bread left for it. Look at this. And that's it. And you do perfect spaghetti, fettuccine, meatball, any shape of pasta you can possibly dream of in less than two minutes with a good food processor. Now, in this case, our friend at KitchenAid supplies some amazing appliances. But these, you could literally do it, but virtually any food processor out there. And the pasta takes a lot less than cooking tomato sauce and meatball does. How easy it is. Good, right? All right, any question, guys, before we hit it off? Yes, please. Hi. Yes, So Hi. you said that you like to cook with the canned tomatoes, I, and I, as long as it's a good brand. Which is your favorite brand to use, and do you use crushed so, or? So um, there is virtually no difference between whole crushed and puree. One is puree that was previously crushed. One is crushed and was previously whole. So it's kind of the same things, especially same brand, right? It's a marketing plot. You know, they charge you more for tomato puree because somebody's got a puree for you. But I usually buy whole tomato, and then I crush them myself, whether by hand or by a masher. Um, there are good brands in the United States. Um, the Cento, the Stanislaus, uh, the, even Barilla, Butoni, stuff that come from Italy. San Marzano. San Marzano is the, is the tomato varietal. San Marzano is not a brand. You see what I mean? So, all right, so let's clarify that. San Marzano is a 10 mile by 20 mile region in the south of Italy at the foot of Mount Etna. It's like saying Grana Padano. <clears throat> to be Grana Padano has to come from the Padana area of Italy, you know, which is kind of the Napa Valley of Italy. Now, that's the namesake Grana Padano. But they do great Grana cheese in Reggio Emilia, which is a region next door. It's not Padano, but it tastes just as good. So when you say San Marzano, it's just a varietal of tomato. I actually have had San Marzano tomato from California that tastes better than the one you get in Naples. Now, I've probably lost 15 friends with this statement, <laughs> but, but it is what it is. If they can handle the truth, might as well walk away. And the reality is that San Marzano is the type, is the plum tomato, right? Um, Sometimes canned tomato, they're not the San Marzano varietal. San Marzano is just the most common it's the common denominator, because everybody knows them. It's a, it's a buzzword. But you can literally do tomato sauce with any canned tomato, as long as there is no salt added, and they're not too acid. The reason why sometimes people, I usually don't, but the reason why sometimes people put a pinch of sugar in their tomato sauce is because some brand of tomato, they add citric acid for, for preservation. And so they can stay canned for four Ears and I mean what? Look, is it bitter, then? it's it's more sour. That's why they add a little bit of sugar because they're buying the wrong can of tomato. It's like anything that look. If it's last for four year on a shelfing, probably is not the things you want to eat every day. You see what I mean? Unless it's hey, it's apocalypse tomorrow, the world goes down to shit, and then we gotta eat canned beans and MRI food for the rest of our life. I'm fine with it. But till you have option, just get something that expires fairly fast. So I know it's probably better for you. Make sense? Any other questions? Question yes, ma'am. What's your name? Uh, Marianne. Hey, Marianne. Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm a really big fan. So Thank you. I'm, I appreciate I'm showing it. all fangirl right now. Oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I had a question about uh, yeah. you made the, the pasta. If I wanted to make a spaghetti. Yeah. Would I also cut it the same way or would no. I use a pasta? If you want to make spaghetti. If you want to make real spaghetti, this is not the recipe for it. Real spaghetti, you need an extruder, and you need a dry recipe pasta. You can make fresh spaghetti, but I suggest you to buy the spaghetti attachment from KitchenAid, which is literally looks just like this with a spaghetti press. So after you, after you roll it, 
you're gonna get the sheet of pasta and you're gonna put it straight through and you're gonna have your round nice spaghetti. I suggest, spaghetti is round. There is no way you can cut that with a knife, makes sense? You can make flat spaghetti, you can make uh, tagliarini, which is it's a flat spaghetti, really. I mean, look, unless you're really set on your spaghetti, <laughs> it, it, it is very little difference. You know, sometimes the shape enhance the sauce, right? Because, you know, if you have a tube pasta or a ridges, something with ridges or, or a chiete or something, it, it grabs the sauce better. But for long pasta, the flavor will be the same. So if you do want to make spaghetti because you're hard dead set on spaghetti, then I suggest you to buy the spaghetti attachment. Any other question? Yes, please. What's your name? Eden. Eden. How do you spell Eden? E-D-N. Got it. E -N, like got it. Like it. Sound it. You got it. So I have Hi. a question for you. I yes. noticed um, when you were making the Can't pasta. Can't hear you. I'm sorry. I noticed when you were making the pasta that you didn't um, let it rest. No, don't. I don't let it rest. I'm a hungry kind of person. <laughs> when, you, when you were growing up and you, your family, did they let the pasta do it? When I was growing up, I wasn't in charge of cooking. So my mom, my mom and my grandma do whatever, whatever they want to. And I, unless I don't want to eat, I better shut up. <laughs> because if I tell my grandma, hey, how about you do this? She was like, how about you cook? And at that point, everybody vote against that. Growing up. Now everybody's like, oh, Fabio should be doing the cooking. <laughs> but, you know, I want to be like, how about 30 years ago, all of you here? Um, but the reality is that you only dry pasta in two instances. First, you're not hungry. Meaning, you just made pasta. Do you want to wait four hours to eat it? That's weird, but sure. Why would you make pasta right now if you eat in four hours? Takes very little time. Make it right before you got to eat it. It can be a gap between the moment I make pasta and the moment I eat. That upset me. Number two, you make too much of it, you make a lot of it, like my mom used to do, and then you let it sit on the counter overnight, so the moisture content goes away and you prolong the shelf life. But there is no technical reason why you should dry your pasta unless you want to preserve it. Make sense? And, and grandma used to do so much of it that she let it dry on the counter. I mean, we literally put tomato and pasta outside of the window balcony. It's a different time in history, you know. You could, you would find then, now it's like, <gasps> you're gonna get like a lawsuit for crime against humanity if you put your pasta on your windowsill. No, no, I don't care. Now, and again, somebody will tell you it's essential, but they didn't grow up in Italy. They heard it from someone and they believed it, which is completely fine. Like I say, yeah, I can't provide guideline, then you do you, you do whatever you want. You like the, you feel it gets better when you dry it? Go for it. Just let me know so if I have to come over for dinner, I don't want to wait for it. Just <laughs> dry it before I arrive. Makes sense? Yeah, please, what's your name? Andrea Francesca. Andrea. Hi. Hi. We met before here. <laughs> no. no, we met before here. You look very familiar. No. We didn't? No. There is somebody going around that looks like just like okay. you, so you'll be aware of that. <laughs> How long How would long? you say you can freeze fresh pasta? You don't freeze fresh. What would you do for it? Why would you do that? Well, what if you made a lot of it? Then dry it and leave it outside on the counter. What would you freeze? What's the point in freezing it? Like, I'm asking, not, not you judging. You want to make lasagna noodles, and you're going to have a dinner in a month. In a month. And you make you it today make if you have dinner in a month. What's yeah, wrong with you? because you got a lot of preparation of other foods. How much? OK, listen. <laughs> sit, sit, get up for sit, sit over there. i got to sit down for this one. All right. Look, here's the reality. You can't cook anything now that you're going to eat in a month unless you're, you're storing and you're hoarding food for apocalypse. <laughs> you, you know, my, my mom, my, they used to can things. They used to put things away. They used to do marinara sauce in June, and we would have it in February. Mm -hmm. I, that's fantastic, but it was, you know, a while back, and there is reason for it. If you want, lasagna noodle literally takes five minutes to make. The sauce can be done in an hour, and anything else, it shouldn't be done until the day before. So unless you want to make the complete dish, the complete lasagna, not just the noodle, yeah. layer everything, and then square it, or you know, put a, a casserole or whatever, right. and freeze that, okay. it's, kind of, it's kind of, you know, doing your hair today for an appointment you have in a month. You gotta, we still got to do something about it in a month. See what I mean? So the full dish makes sense. The, the noodle itself, just wait. Okay. Unless you're cooking for 70,000 people, 
and, and you're just gonna spend the next 30 days cooking 20 hours a day, then I tell you, do something before and do still the lasagna <laughs> towards the end. But what if you're cooking for like 50 people? You cook for 50 people? You cook for 50 people? No, what if you're having a family and you have 50 people? Who has 50 people in their family? You care for that many people? Good for you. Italian family. Italian family. It's very big. Well, then I tell you what. Do the full thing and freeze them. Never freeze fresh pasta because there is a principle. So fresh pasta to perform has to be cooked at the time or dry mm -hmm. because you're going to take the moisture out, right? right? Now, if you freeze it, what's going to happen? The moisture is going to dry it out. It's gonna fr no, it's going to stay there and it's going to freeze. And what happened to things that are defrosted? They get soggy. So now your pasta is not going to be that good. Now, the other thing is that if you freeze the whole lasagna, the whole thing, and then you get the whole damn casserole, put it back in the oven and cook it straight, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. But I don't want you to look bad in front of 50 people. Don't oh. freeze your pasta. Okay. Please. Thanks. You really have 50 people coming over. Yeah. You got to be one hell of a cook. Good for you. Any other question? One more. Right, what's your name? Uh, my name's Chiara. Chiara? Yes. Like Chiara in Italy or Chiara yes. with a K? No, C-H-I-A-R. C -H -A -R. Very good. You from Italy or something? Uh, my father. Nice. Very good. So I just Hi, had a question. I saw you used all-purpose flour, yeah. but would you use semolina? No. No. I'm a cheap date, meaning okay. <clears throat> uh, when it comes to food, stay with the basic. Okay. It's easier. And, and semolina, first of all, is a different product. Semolina is, is, is a non-processed flour, which technically is better for you, but it's also a lot coarser, yeah. right? So the process and the chemistry of it, it's going to be completely different. Semolina, you have to work it a lot longer. Yeah, Semolina, okay. you have to rest it. Semolina, you have to dry it, because otherwise the pasta breaks. It's just a headache for the home cook, okay. but if you have a restaurant like I do, then I do all my pasta with semolina. Okay. Now, mind you, from a flavor profile, it's very similar. You're gonna feel little to no difference. Maybe your dad can, but I would challenge every person that didn't grow up eating pasta six times a day to figure that one out. Right. For a restaurant that performs better, you, it lasts a little longer, it's a little bit more forgiving if you forget the pasta in the pasta boiler because you got 50 tickets in front of you. So it's harder to overcook, but for the home cook, Eight. Just choose a double zero white flour, okay. cheap, basic stuff. Okay, awesome. That's perfect. Thank you. Where is your dad from? Um, well, I'm probably going to say it incorrectly. Multidabari? Bari? Bari, it's down Bari. south. Beautiful. Fantastic area. I used to have a property um, in, the, in the, really the hill of Italy. It's gorgeous. Ed. You ever been there? Come on. I've been to Italy. But been so you've been to Italy, but you said, Dad, I care about that. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. Nah. That's, why, why would I want to see where you grew up? Yeah. I love it. Good for you. Very good. Well, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you always. Uh, I'll see you next year. Next year, I promise I'll be front and center. You're always front and center. But next year, I'll be in the middle of the, the middle event of, middle at of the, the event. very end. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you all later. Thank you.